What do all the best websites have in common? Great imagery, great copy, but above all, they have spacing that makes that copy and imagery actually legible to the users. In this video, we're gonna cover how you can actually achieve designs like this one from Stripe directly in Figma using very simple spacing methods. Let's get into it. Now, we could rebuild this using all the individual elements like the text block, the imagery, the buttons, but in this case, I'm gonna be using Tilebit to start from a wireframing kit so that we can speed up the design process. So I'm simply gonna copy this and paste it down directly into Figma. And here we have on the left side, the Stripe hero header. And then on the right side, we have Tilebit's hero header number five. And if we dive into Figma's new dev mode, we can see exactly how the spacing is created in this case to achieve this kind of result. So in this case, our imagery and our text blocks are a little bit different. So we're gonna get into that in just a second. But first let's take a look at the spacing, which is critical in this case. So to start off, we have a padding on the top side, the bottom side, and then the left and right side, and also that spacing in between the text and the image. We'll get into that in just a second. But one important thing to keep in mind here is that all the numbers that you're gonna be seeing in any design that I ever build is using the four point grid system and sometimes even the eight point grid system. The point is that you want a scalable grid system that makes sense for your content. Now let me explain what that means. So in this case we have 104, 104, 88 and then 80 but if we click on this next container here just like that we'll see that these two blocks here are separated by 32 pixels. Now this type of spacing method is critical when you're designing from Figma to Webflow or any other type of site because you can start to use REMs. Now REMs are the best way to develop your website either in Webflow or wherever it is that you're building it because it can scale directly related to your root HTML size. I have a full video on all of that so if you want to check it out up there but let's dive deeper into here. So these two pieces of content are separated by 32 pixels and if we follow the trend here and if we go into the next block here let me just go into the layer panel so we can see what we're doing we have two individual blocks here. So this next one is then separated by 24 pixels. I don't know if you're starting to see a trend here but the point is that we go from the largest spacing all the way down to the smallest spacing. And while we do that, we're always using the four pixel grid. Now the spacing in this case might make sense, but the actual content that we're seeing here, it makes it a little bit hard to tell what we're actually designing here. So let's do a quick redesign of Stripe's hero header. We first need to go ahead and make this the proper text size and body size. Now I already have done that. Let's go ahead and make this as much of a replica as we can here. So we see that we're already starting to get there and I'm gonna make this a fixed width first and then completely get rid of this in this case, just like that, all the way to zero and set that to auto so that the content can go all the way to the right side as we have it in this case. Now we're almost there, but I think the last thing that we need is that backdrop. So if we go ahead and design that quick backdrop, it doesn't have the gradient as we want it to. But now that we have this very basic version of Stripe's hero header, we can see that the super, super critical aspect of all of this is gonna be the spacing. And we can see that in Stripe's actual design here, they also have this 32 pixel separation. Separation. So they're also using this eight pixel grid. So this solidifies what we're talking about here. Having this eight pixel grid and sometimes four pixels is going to be absolutely critical. Now this applies to any type of designs that you're going to build. It's not just the hero headers or the nav bars or whatever you want. In this case, I'm going to show you guys some more complex designs so you guys can really understand this eight pixel grid scaling system. So here we have a few different sections. We have the hero header we just designed, a feature section, a couple feature sections, and then a footer. Another thing that you can pay attention to here is going to be the spacing of things. Now, ignoring this different spacing aspect, just because we're copying Stripe here, if we take a look at how everything is aligned, you'll see that every single thing in this case, unless it's aligned in the center, has the same exact vertical alignment. If I use my ruler here, you'll see that all of the content is going to fall in between these two lines. There's nothing that's going to be separated on to the right side, or there's nothing that's going to be, if, if I can show you a quick example, nothing's going to be like this, like this kind of, of spacing here. It's all going to be separated in the middle and this helps designs feel consistent it helps them feel like they're part of the same website and they're not just copied from somewhere else and it's kind of placed in randomly this is a super critical part to all of this spacing now if we take a look at the rest of stripes page we'll see that we follow that same principle now if you follow my mouse here on the stripe page you'll see that most of the content is going to follow down the same line in some cases like this one with the logos it might make sense to have the content a little bit more in the center i do agree to that but you need to see that in this 
case, they do have these lines that help you see that imaginary line, where in this case, it's a little bit more obvious. Now, if you keep going all the way down, we'll see that all of the content on the left side, at least the text here stays on the same line. And this is super, super important. Here we have some logos again, but apart from that, everything stays on the left side. Now on the right side here, we see that we obviously have some of these images that are sticking out. And that I think is more of a stylistic choice. You could obviously do that. But the point is that they don't have these text blocks here all the way moved in almost like center here because they just feel like it, you know, it all has to follow a guide. Now, if we go back to these feature sections in Figma, we can see that our spacing method has the same principles of going from the largest spacing and moving eight pixels down every time that we have to create a brand new accent or a link or whatever the case may be. We want to always be moving down that ladder. In this case, these two content blocks are separated by 80 pixels and the next spacing between these two is going to be separated by 40 pixels. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're spacing out your content like this with the eight pixel grid, it's important to remember why you're adding more space than needs to be. In this case, I wanted to separate these two content pieces. So the text itself and then these tags, I wanted there to be a clear distinction between the both of them. Now, there's nothing wrong with ungrouping this and making this a smaller spacing like that 32 or maybe 24 even. So that doesn't look half bad. But in this case, it's more of a stylistic choice to, to just be able to separate these two pieces of content. But when we go from 40 all the way down, we'll see that we'll go down that ladder from 30 pixels or in this case, minus 16 pixels all the way down to 24, because then we can have a more compact group of text. The same thing applies down to these feature columns here. So we have all the way from the top, we have 32 pixels and then moving down, it's going to be either 24 or 16 pixels. Now, in this case, we have 16 pixels. Now, in this case, we could keep it at 16 or even go down to eight pixels. But the point is that we don't want to go all the way up to 32 or 40 even, because if we do that, things will look out of place and the content itself doesn't make sense in that type of spacing. So I'm just going to revert back to 16. We can see that this type of content works the same way for this feature section. So you see that we go from 32 pixels and then in between these two, we have 32 as well. Down here, we have 24. Here we have 16 pixels of spacing for the buttons. And then within here, we also have 16 pixels. So again, using that eight point pixel grid is going to be critical for having this kind of very minimal spacious layouts. And of course, the same thing will happen to these type of components, the footer components, any type of components really has the same structure. We start out with auto spacing here to make everything as tight as possible. And then we go 32, 32. And if we wanted to down here, 16. So again, we're always going down that scale. So guys, if you want to speed up your design process and use these pre-built components for Figma, for Framer, and for Webflow, I recommend that you check out my component library, tilebit.io, where you can find all of these and 500 more. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed, if you guys have any questions of anything that I designed here, let me know in the comments down below. I'm going to reply to all of them as always. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.